<laughs> hey, I'm Father Taylor Albright, and welcome again to a conversation I'm having with an old friend of mine, uh, Dan Nicewanger, who lives up in the just south of Philadelphia area. And uh, Dan and I go way back to when we were in the Springfield area. I was out in uh, Southwick, and he was in downtown Springfield. And uh, we've been talking about uh, his life with Jesus, really, I guess what we're talking about, and uh, and and walking with Jesus in the midst of also getting a diagnosis of stage four cancer, which Dan got back in uh, 2016. And at the time, uh, doctors told him you had two years to live. And uh, uh, I don't think the point of him sharing that with us was like, see, it's a miracle that I live past that. Uh, but he has learned to live and see things in a way that, you know, even for us folks that pray and read scripture and worship a lot, you know, it's hard to understand how did you could come to a place of seeing that even cancer comes as a gift of God and the grace is there. So in our second episode, uh, he talked about that experience and how that goes. But today, what I really want to focus on is, you know, as we do that, uh, most of us as a Christians, you know, we, we uh, however, we either we grew up in church or have a conversion experience and we end up back in church, you know, we've prioritized like Sunday as a very big deal. That's part of our, what we call discipleship. Sunday is really about worship and community. It's, you know, that's that one part of discipleship. Uh, two, we sometimes think of like Bible study. Oh, it's good to know the Bible and study it. But often what I find is people read it and they they get some things out of it, but we don't see it as a way of reorienting the way we see the world. Uh, and certainly we see his prayers, we're praying for our kids and family members in the world, but all those things we kind of see as kind of basics. And sometimes we never get to a place where if we got a, you know, situation, life situation came up where we could see something as as odious as stage four cancer as being um, gift and grace. So Dan, I'm kind of curious. So first, here's my first question. Now you were a guy who undoubtedly, you know, you went to the same seminary I did. And so you, you know, you got the Greek and Hebrew, you're very scripturally oriented. You got a certain kind of perspective on how to live as a Christian. Uh, and then I also knew, because we got together mostly for prayer and doing more kind of quiet contemplative prayer, but how, how did the practices or how did what you did as a normal set of like uh, practices in your day and your week, how well did that prepare you to get to a place where you could see this cancer as both gift and, uh, and see that God's grace was at work in it? So, so, so this is the before question. Do you, how well do you think you were prepared by your practices to, to get to a place where you could see it as gift and God's grace? I think part of the um, part of the practices that prepared me, I think, was the time of quiet um, and and the asking questions um, was really was really really helpful. Um, what what I experienced um, was when somebody tells you you have a limited time to live, you have less than two years to live. All of a sudden, clarity, you know, things become very clear. Um, as what matters and what doesn't matter, um, and and that was was very helpful um, for me. I knew where I wanted to invest time and where I didn't want to invest time, um, and I think that's something that all of us could do. You know, even if we don't hear those words from a doctor, we could sit down and we could say, "Hey, um, if I had limited time in my life, where would I invest time? What would I get rid of?" Um, and then we, we could go through an exercise. I've actually helped some people go through that, you know, who are in, in you know, in the world's eyes, perfectly healthy people. But just say, look, if if you had limited time, what would you keep? What would you get rid of? Um, and I think jettisoning some of the stuff that we fill our time with, but doesn't it doesn't advance the kingdom. It doesn't grow us. It doesn't speak life into other people. Um, that is was is a healthy thing. Um, the second thing that I think was really helpful for me was times of quiet, and and I would get away, um, and and be still and be quiet for for extended periods of time, you know. And I I would take about a week, 
um, and just go and, and be still and be quiet. Um, I would hang out at the Jesuit Center um, up in Reading, Pennsylvania. And, and as, I would, as I would be there and be quiet, um, would start to ask um, the Spirit, ask God all these, these questions that I was wrestling with. And, and rather than trying to answer them myself, waiting for the Spirit of God um, to, to, to give me direction, um, and I started to pray uh, a certain way. And I started to pray that I would start to have the eyes, the ears, the heart, and the mind of Jesus as I as I moved through as I moved through the through the world and as I moved through this season of of having cancer. Um, and it and it transformed the way that I saw myself and the way that I saw other people. Um, and and it, it allowed that idea of all of life being gift. Um, it, it moved from being a, um, something that you could say and something you could think about, and it, and it moved into, um, something deeper in the heart and, and something where God's grace was able to say, yes, yeah, see, this is what I'm talking about. It's something. So, so let me ask you a question about that. Cause, yeah. cause I remember we had some conversations, you know, I think you and I probably came from the same, uh, preparation background, which. I am busy, therefore I am. You know, yes. like the busy you are as a pastor, therefore you know you you're all your self-important or whatever. You know, your your Jesus is happy or something. I don't know whatever that was that we certainly have embodied. But then I remember uh, a time where you said, "Well, you know, Taylor, I, I just started taking uh, instead. I used to I used to be able to take a day off, but I started taking several days off." And I just go up to this retreat center. And I said, because I was a little, I was like, okay, and what do you do at this retreat center? And you said, I just got to wait and see if God will show up. Which I thought was like, I didn't think it was silly. I thought it was like heavy. Like, because mm -hmm. I'm not exact, I'm giving God like, okay, I do have between, you know, 6:45 and 7:15. I've got time. If you can make it available, you can show up, dear Lord. I am anxious to listen. You know, this idea of just slowing down a place. So that was. So I remember you talking about that. I remember you starting to start to do that as a habit. The second part was you said I would ask questions and uh, and just ask God to to speak to me about these things. Now, I think most of us. Uh, imagine like we if we read the scriptures we'll say and Moses said to God and God said to Moses and we say okay so apparently God speaks to some people but he doesn't speak to everybody and I don't think he speaks to me in that way so when you say that you waited for God to speak to you what in what way describe what you consider how God was speaking and moving perhaps not even with words but like tell me explain a little bit how you thought that went so I, I believe that God does want to speak to all people, right? I, like I, in Psalm 42, verse 7, um, the psalmist writes, deep calls to deep. And, and when the psalmist used those words, uh, what, what I've come to understand that to be is the depth of God, the fullness of God, the completeness of God, calling out to the fullness of who we are. And the fullness of who we are, the completeness of who we are, all the good, the bad, and the ugly, um, calling out to the fullness of who God is. And that as, as deep calls to deep, as the fullness of who I am calls out to the fullness of who God is, that the fullness of God calls out to, to the fullness of who I am. And, and that's not something that, that happens overnight, right? It's, 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 it's something that we learn and something that we grow. It's, it's like any relationship that we have with, with, with another person. We don't develop a, a, a deep, uh, profound relationship with somebody you know, the first time we get together, the more time we spend together, we we discern. Oh, okay, this is this is how they this is how they think. This is how they this is how they this is what they mean when they say this. Um, they're communicating even whenever we might not hear them audibly speak. Um, you know, we're picking up on you know what they're what they're saying um, to us. And I believe we do the same thing with with the Spirit of God. You know, that when we spend time in prayer, um, the Spirit will will guide um, where we may end up in the scriptures 
The spirit may guide where we end up, um, where we're thinking. The spirit but, may guide but, where we end just up. Just interrupt you. So the guiding isn't necessarily like I've got the Bible open and, and it's like, turn the page. I mean, it's kind of like a leading. Like, so, yeah, it could be. It can be a leading, right? It can. It can be a leading where it just like you know, hey, I end up. I end up in this passage of scripture, and as I'm reading it, there's something inside me that that I'm drawn to this, and 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 the spirit is is saying, hey, I, I want you to spend time with this. Or, or you spend time in, in a, in a, on a passage of scripture, and then you're going to spend time reading the book, and boy, they mesh together. And well, how about that? Well, what's 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 in that? You know, the question is, well, God, what do you have in that for me? Um, and it may be nothing, um, but it may be that the Spirit of God is saying, look, I, I want you to see how these these themes weave themselves in together. Um, you know, and then you have a conversation with somebody, and and they. And they say something that that you know goes right along with what you've already been reading in the scriptures and reading over here, and somebody affirms something else, and it's like, okay, here it here it comes again. You know, the spirit is weaving all this stuff in together, um, and I, that's one of the ways that the spirit works and speaks in our lives. And I think the spirit also speaks, um, you know, whenever we are in times of prayer, when we're in times of quiet, and there is a, you know, we're asking or or we're we're asking for something for direction for wisdom, um, or we're we're just in times of quiet meditation, and we have this sense that God is just is saying, hey, all is well with you, or I'm inviting you into this this new thing um, to be a piece and a part of, or or here's something I want you to look at in your life, and maybe you need to maybe you need to change this a little bit. Mm. Um, like I think we get those those promptings, those directings, um, and and sometimes we 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 kind of we write those off as well. My mind went here, well, my mind went there, and I tend to look at it and go, yeah, well, you know what? The spirit of God led your mind there, um, and it's up to us to discern if that's the spirit or if that's you know we ate too many tacos the night before for dinner, <laughs> right? I mean, that's where, that's where the, over time we, we discern, you know, the, the leading, guiding and directing of the spirit. Interesting stuff. Dan, we may have to have you back for a little more just to talk about, you know, how that all works and in uh, some other conversations. But uh, I know that, uh, is, is this your final week of this version of treatment or, or how close are you to this round? Uh, well, I did my see Monday of this week was my fifth um, fifth uh, piece of this round, and this round will probably go uh, probably ten or twelve cycles. So I have uh, I have a little bit more in this round to go, I'm about, and, probably about halfway. And how many uh, how many times have you gone through this process? This is my fifth round of systemic chemotherapy, and I've had uh, a couple other treatments in between there. I but Taylor, look, I'm blessed. I, you know, I I just I am blessed that uh for whatever reason my body has responded to treatment every single time. And it's responding now. And so I uh you know each 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 round is more difficult than the last one. Um but uh but right now it, it looks like my body's responding to it and I'm thankful for it. And uh you know God for whatever reason is, uh, you know, I, I'm experiencing temporary, you know, reprieve and, you know, cells are shrinking and all that kind of stuff. And that'll last for a while. And a few months from now, we'll start it up again um, and start shrinking stuff again. So mm. that's been the pattern. Well, I tell you what, I, it's, it's amazing. Sometimes you think, oh, if I get, you know, if I had a terrible disease or some calamity happened in my life, then maybe that's the end of like my productivity, you know, like my ability to help people, you know, find God, advance the kingdom, all the stuff that we would say is the real important stuff about productivity or to be a good dad or to be a husband or a friend. Yeah. And I just say like, I, I just, man, I just love you for the fact that you just, you just, you just capture that grace so well, you know, so thank you. So thanks for that. And thanks for these three sessions. And we may be talking again shortly. Okay. God bless you the rest of today and say hi to your wife and uh, we'll hopefully we'll talk again soon.
Okay, Thanks, sounds man. great, man. Thank you. Appreciate so it. So again, October 2nd, we're getting together for um, a time of a healing prayer and to talk about these very issues during our worship service at the church here at Trinity Church in beautiful downtown uh, uh, Tarrafo, Connecticut. So thanks, guys.